the collect for the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene, we pray, we beseech thee, O Lord, that we be helped by the intercession of blessed Mary Magdalene, by whose prayers thou didst raise her brother Lazarus to life after he had been dead four days. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is a subject, the life of a saint, that I've been wanting to preach about to you for, I would say, a couple of years now, and just never had the chance. Did you know that our Lord told St. Mechtilda, she was a visionary, our Lord told her, three saints have been more pleasing to me than all the others. Mary, my mother, John the Baptist, and Mary Magdalene. And this should be no surprise when we get right down to it. For when our Lord appeared for the first time as the Messiah, and he had made himself known, all of Israel, the Pharisees and the scribes, they were all expecting from the Messiah only worldly goods and a temporal kingdom. They had a mistaken notion of why why he had come to earth. They wanted temporal things. And even the apostles, they had been following our Lord faithfully for three years. And they still didn't get it. Not even John, who was referred to as the beloved disciple, not even he could get it. They still looked to receive honors and first places and dignities in his earthly kingdom. But Magdalene was the first of the saints to approach our Lord, not for his gifts, not for honors, not for dignities, but for himself alone. And if there was anything else that she wanted from our Lord, it was only pardon of her sins and love. That is all she sought, and she found it there at the feet of our blessed Lord, those feet that were so worn out for many years of seeking after his lost sheep. Now, from the time of Magdalene's conversion, she was always at our Lord's disposal. Saints never go in halves. They give themselves entirely. She was totally at our Lord's disposal. And he accepted the offering. For the rest of her life, it is said, that she sat at the feet of our Lord contemplating his the mysteries of his life and listening to the words of salvation that fell from his lips as he preached his kingdom. Listening. But then you let us turn to the Pharisees. As we'll see, they complained about her. Her sister Martha found fault with her for doing this. And even Judas, imagine it, Judas, who betrayed our Lord, still found the gumption inside himself to speak against this holy woman. But it was our Lord himself. Notice in the Gospels, whenever you read that someone complained about her, she never defended herself. But who did? It was our Lord himself who defended her honor in all three of those occasions. One author said it was as if the sacred heart of our Lord were hurt by the least word spoken against Mary Magdalene. She was truly one of his favorite saints. St. Albert the Great, he also has a very beautiful quote about this saint. He says, just as in the the material creation, God has made two great lights, the sun to rule the day and the moon to rule the night, so in the world of grace, he made two Marys, namely the mother of our Lord and secondly the sister of Lazarus, the Blessed Virgin Mary to rule the day of innocence and Magdalene, the penitent, to rule the night by enlightening repentant sinners. What a beautiful quote to reflect on. St. Mary Magdalene is queen of penitence and her special title given to her by the church is not Apostle, nor is it virgin or confessor or martyr. It is simply penitent. And this is how the church refers to her, and it is the way that all of us here today 
should remember her. She is a sinner who became a saint. The saying goes that every saint had his past and every sinner has his future. But so beautiful is penitence in the eyes of God that he is pleased that Magdalene should be remembered by this title, which title continually shows every generation of Catholics the story of Magdalene's sins and God's mercy. She, more than any of the other saints, is a source of hope to the sinner who feels lost. You know how it starts out. Let's go through the scenes of Mary Magdalene's life. Our Lord had been invited to the home of Simon, the Pharisee, to eat at a banquet. They were all seated there in their positions, enjoying their meal, having good conversation, and our Lord, of course, elevating the conversation to spiritual matters, you could be assured. And Magdalene, out on the streets, she hears that our Lord is present, and without giving it a second thought, she runs in through the doors of a stranger's house, be it the Pharisee, who had already thought that she was such a sinner. No fear of shame, no fear of what others might say about her or think about her or do to her. She bursts through the doors, and as soon as her eyes fall on our Lord, she throws herself at his feet and begins bathing them with her tears and wiping them with her hair. And Simon the Pharisee, imagine the scene, he's thinking to himself, surely this man if he were a prophet, would know what kind of woman this is and would get rid of her. And our Lord, showing his divinity and that he can read even the most secret thoughts of our hearts, he spoke to Simon and said, Simon, I have something to say to thee. And went on to speak about who would love more, the one who has forgiven a less debt or the one who has forgiven more of a debt. He answered, and then he looked, turned towards Mary Magdalene and said of her, many sins are forgiven her because she has loved much. What a beautiful lesson of the life of this saint. But after her conversion in the house of Simon the Pharisee, she grew so much in charity and prayer and contemplation that after Our Lady, it is said that she is the holiest of all the holy women in the church. And upon her conversion, going back to the house of Simon, at that moment of her her conversion, our Lord did not hide his joy on this occasion. And she would from that moment on match her love with his by giving her all. As one author put it, Our Lord would pour himself out for love of man, but Mary Magdalene would pour herself out for the love of God. She then attached attached herself to our Lord and to the number of the holy women who followed our Lord throughout his travels into Galilee and up into Jerusalem. And for two years, she heard his sermons and ministered to him and to his apostles. So dedicated to our Lord was she. But did you know there was a second time too when she anointed the feet of Christ? This time it was the house of another Simon, Simon the leper. His house was close to the house of Magdalene in in the city of Bethany. And this time the anointing was done in order to comfort our Lord who would soon be hung on the cross. It was six days before the Passion. A dinner was prepared to honor our Lord, and Martha, as usual, was busy cooking and cleaning, doing all of the kitchen work. Lazarus, it says, was seated at the table as well. He had been risen, he had been raised from the dead already. And Mary Magdalene, she was again at the feet of our Lord, as she always was, and took the precious ointment and poured it on our Lord's head, just dumped it out, because saints always give all they'd never give in halves, just dumped it on his head, 
the head which would be soon crowned with thorns. And then she knelt down and wiped with her hair the dust off of the feet of our Lord, those feet that would be soon nailed to the cross. Then she anointed them. Judas was there on this occasion, that awful traitor Judas, and said to Magdalene quite angrily, you could imagine, why wasn't this ointment sold for so much and the money given to the poor? St. John mentioned in that gospel that Judas didn't care about the poor. He was avaricious. He cared only about the money. But our Lord turned to Judas and again defending her, says, Why do you trouble this woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For the poor you have always with you, but me you have not always. For she, in pouring this ointment upon my body, hath done it for my burial. Amen, I say to you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, that also which she hath done shall be told for a memory of her. St. Mary Magdalene followed our Lord through each step of her passion. So much did he love, she love him. She was at his side on the way to Calvary, at least as often as she could get close. And it was she who stood by the cross of our Lord along with Our Lady and St. John the Apostle. Only love can make you do such things because the crucifixion of our Lord was, was her martyrdom. And only love makes all of these sufferings light. For three agonizing hours she stayed there. And it said, an interesting little detail, that there again she was at the feet of our Lord on the cross. And that for those three hours the blood dropped, drop by drop, onto the hair of St. Mary Magdalene. His death was her martyrdom. She followed him to the grave and at sunset on Holy Saturday went out to buy spices to anoint our Lord's body once again. And then you know the rest of the history of that Easter Sunday morning. She ran to the tomb to anoint him and found it empty. Then she runs off in in deep grief. She ran to the apostles to tell them of the empty tomb. And she sets the apostles in motion. She became on that occasion the apostle to the apostles. That is why, as a a side note, did you know that St. Mary Magdalene is the only female saint, besides Our Lady, of course, who gets a creed prayed during her Mass? Well, that's the reason. Because on the Feast of of Faith, which is Easter, she set the apostles in motion to go out and preach the empty tomb and the risen Christ. Later on, Magdalene was present at the Ascension and then again in the Cenacle awaiting the Holy Ghost. But I don't have time today to tell you all of these details for the rest of her life. But I do want to say one more thing that many of us don't even realize. What happened after all of that? After all of these deep mysteries of our faith, what then went on? Fourteen years after the death of Christ, the Jews in Palestine waged a a great persecution against the Christians. And Magdalene, along with her brother Lazarus and sister Martha and several other Christians, were placed upon a boat with neither sail nor oar and pushed out to sea and to be left for dead. But the providence of God was behind them and caused the boat to drift off to the mouth of the Rhone River in in France. And here they all went their separate ways. Martha went into one city, and there she became very well known for her charitable deeds and works. Lazarus became a bishop. And Magdalene, she found a cave in France, in the middle of nowhere, pretty much, to live the remaining 30 years of her life in pure contemplation. No food, no contact with people, no running water anywhere, no trees or herbs to be found. But every day, the angels would come down to the cave and pick her up and take her into the sky so that she could hear the heavenly choirs of all the angels singing and praising God in heaven. Every day, 
for the rest of her life that happened. What a beautiful saint. Certainly, she was one of our Lord's favorites. What is a lesson? Quickly, to end the sermon. The lesson is this. When she was still in the house of Simon the Pharisee, those words of our Lord, the praise of of Mary Magdalene, many sins are forgiven her because she has loved much. It's a lesson for us all. Do you want your sins to be forgiven? Love much. The more you love God, the more you'll weep over your sins. The more you love God, the more you'll show that love by obeying his commandments and gradually become, by stages, a great saint. Many sins are forgiven because she has loved much. The second is the power of Magdalene's prayers. This is the final thought, the power of her prayers. Did you ever stop to think when Lazarus was being buried in the tomb and he was wrapped in the burial cloths and dead for four days, Martha had already went to our Lord and told him of the situation and wanted wanted our Lord to do something, but nothing was done. Then Magdalene comes along a few minutes later and says almost the same thing. And our Lord lets out a groan, as it says in the gospel. He is defeated by one of his creatures whom he loves so much. And he says, Lazarus, in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. It was her prayer that brought about the resurrection of Lazarus. How powerful are her prayers. Go to her whether it's for your own sins that you're seeking pardon for or whether it is the sins of a loved one, go to her. She knows how to obtain good results. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.